I'm Charlie from CookingSecretsForMen.com and this is the next installment of our Cooking with Community Leaders. Uh, today I'm pleased to be joined by Wendell Willis. Um, Wendell has a new fancy job that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, Wendell is one of our community leaders here in Milwaukee and um, you and I first met back when you were the president of the MPS, which is Milwaukee Public Schools Foundation. And then before that, you were the COO of MPS. So, um, you know, I do a little work with MPS. I'm on the scholarship review committee. And we also do within the MPS, because we do mock interviews with the kids. And so that's, so I love working with the kids. So tell me about the work first with the foundation yeah. and then working in the public school system in an urban environment and the fun working with the legislature of the state. Sure. Well, Charlie, thanks for having me. Uh, great to be with you today. Uh, so yeah, when we first met, I was running MPS Foundation, and I would say it was one of the highlights of my career for sure, being able to really work with public, private, government sector, really to look at bringing as many resources as possible to our students. Obviously that's why the foundation exists. Can we provide as many resources to students as possible? And getting deeper as to like what are the systemic issues, probably can't fix all of those, but at least provide some immediate resources and relief. So, you know, we had a number of projects which, again, you know, you volunteered with some of the work with those mock interviews. We're able to help then find placements for those students while they're in high school and then going off beyond high school, either into college or going right into work immediately. Great. So, you recently uh, took a new job, uh, left MPS. And you're working um, with Freighter Hospital here in the Freighter Health System here in Milwaukee. And there's an intersection with the Milwaukee Bucks. So why don't you tell us about that? Because that seems very interesting. So let's hear about what you're doing now. Yeah, so many people may or may not be aware of Freighter and the Bucks having a long-term relationship as Freighter and the Medical College, having that partnership both sponsorship-wise and the marketing side, but also as a sports medicine group for the Bucks. The Bucks were looking at things from the ownership perspective, so I would say primarily uh, Mike and Beth Facitelli, Jamie Dinan and his wife Elizabeth Miller said philanthropically, how can we make different investments into communities? And from the freighter health side saying, let's look at the social determinants, but let's think it from the neighborhood's perspective, not our perspective of what they need. Really, I'm serving as that conduit, both for philanthropy and for the neighborhood to say, Here's what's needed, and we're working with three great agencies, United Community Centers, uh, United Methodist Children's Services, and Silver Spring Neighborhood Center in their neighborhood specifically to get the pulse of the neighborhoods and then say, these are the projects that we would love pitch to an investor group. They will look at it and say, hey, we want this to look like when we were in our professional careers, an investment opportunity really to uplift your neighborhood, but in your vision, not ours, but really, you know, I've kind of coined it as a real-time health equity fund. We're not waiting for money and then executing projects. We're going to execute projects from day one. So, you know, we'll make a formal announcement in December. We'll release the name of our project, like what we're calling it and branding it. Because obviously, you know, the Bucks and Freighter have great marketing and branding teams. So we've got a good name selected, which, you know, I wanted to spoil today, but I can't do that. I'll be in trouble. But I think it'll be fun. It'll be great work really working a lot closer with families. But I always said as the chief operating officer, you know, the operations teams are in service to academics and the needs of the families. So I looked at it from that equity lens, which really ended up relaying to the work I did at the foundation now eventually here. So I think it's been an interesting crossroad with all the jobs I've had previously getting me to this because ultimately it's some of the same families being served. But now we're looking at some long-term solutions and say, let's think about how can we learn, because probably if we do this well, we can replicate this. That's right. So um, some of you out there may not know, Milwaukee is one of the poorest cities in the United States. And to have community leaders that are working out within the neighborhoods is what the community desperately needs. Um, tell me a little bit about your family. And the secondary question to that is, how much of the cooking do you do? <laughs> So it's, it's probably, well, I'll start with the last question, last question first. So it's probably like 60, 40, 70, 30, my wife to myself. I would say in the summer, I take on the large lion's share of it because 
I like to be on the grill. I also like being in our backyard. We tend to look at the schedule. So as you know, having kids, sure. now I've got three kids. It's a little bit different now because we're like almost empty nesters. Uh, we've got a 13-year-old still at home, going, uh, getting ready to go into high school next year, so in eighth grade now. We've got a uh, senior at college at DePaul in Chicago, and we've got a son who's a sophomore at uh, Iowa. Uh, as having only one in the house now, it's a little bit easier to de facto, like what's easiest to fix. So sometimes it's like, if you could help, do prep work or clean up. Don't do the main thing with me because too many cooks in the kitchen is definitely a problem. Absolutely. So, what are we cooking today? So we're gonna do steak fajitas. So mm -hmm. I'd say based on what my family said, that's one of the things they like the most. But the real key for my wife and I was, I got really good over this pandemic in doing margaritas. So you need something to pair it with. So even though it's uh, <laughs> 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning, uh, we're just gonna pretend that it's uh, late evening and we're gonna have some margaritas with our steak fajitas. Right. So, um, give us a minute to set up and then we'll be back and show you how we put the, or how Wendell puts together the steak fajitas. I'm just the sous chef today. So I'll uh, be back in just a minute. All right, we're ready to start cooking, but um, Wendell uh, has some nice clothes on, so I'm going to give him one of our aprons to wear, so cooking secrets for men. Thank you. Um, absolutely. So Wendell's going to prepare the marinade, which is going to use both for the steak and the vegetables, correct? Correct. All right, take it away. Yeah, so it's a pretty simple marinade. I actually found two recipes online that I loved, and I kind of combined the two because there was just a little slight difference and not much. So roughly three to four tablespoons of olive oil. Be generous with the amount of lime juice that you have as well. Two tablespoons, but you can also go a little over the, that. You can really never go wrong with enough limes because that's really going to kick up the flavor. So you're using that two limes for Four halves. halves. Same thing with garlic. So a tablespoon there of minced garlic. You can actually probably do one and a half. Wendell, I'm Italian, and there's no such thing as too much garlic, so. Right. <laughs> Go for it. Tablespoon of garlic powder, and then teaspoon of everything else. Cumin. So that chili powder is from my son in New Mexico's New Mexico red chili. Excellent. And then some hot pepper flakes. And then a little bit of paprika as well, so about one teaspoon, go maybe a little over as well, depending on a teaspoon of salt and pepper. And that really does it. And this is pretty easy. Because you've got the other flavors in there, you don't need as much pepper. Yeah. But. All right, so we'll mix this together. All right. And then we're going to start with the vegetables or the... So we're going to start with the steak. You really want to get enough to coat your steak. And then so I'll just put it into a plastic bag. All right, so you're saving half for the vegetables. Save half for the vegetables. You gotta let it sit out for about an hour or put it in your fridge for a couple of hours. All right, um, let's give us a minute and we'll get the vegetables ready. All right, so we've got uh, with the steak marinade, and we're going to put it in the oven in a broiler. So the broiler is set for high, and um, that's the first step is to put the steak in. So once you go ahead and slap that into the broiler here, and we're going to watch it and listen. So you got a pan heating, cast iron pan, and we'll just do some olive oil, get it all ready. All right. So actually, I'll go onions first, okay. because I like to make sure that our onions get that caramelized. And again, for the steak, I don't think I mentioned, uh, typically, let's go five to six minutes, and then flip it for another three to four, and see where we're at. All right, so the onions are starting to uh, caramelize, looking good. So we've got some stoplight peppers, what we call the green, red, yellow. We're going to saute those a little bit. I'm going to add some, well right now, we actually add a little salt. 
pepper to it. I'm going to add the marinade in a moment or two. Alright, so you pour in the rest of the marinade in? I'll pour the rest of this marinade in and then just let it simmer while our steak continues to work its magic in the oven. Alright, so it's the same marinade used for the steak. So it's a, a tie-in with the flavor palette. Alright, so we're looking good there on the peppers. Yeah, so I'm going to let it do its thing. I'll check on the steak. So we're looking great in the steak. I think I'm going to go probably three to four minutes. Back in the Slice oven. it and then just take another look then. But, you know, we're at a good place with it because it's not too thick, but it's not too thin either. Okay. All right, so the steak is out of the broiler. We're going to move on to combining the veggies and the steak. Yeah, so our steak looks good. I sliced a little bit open to check, and we're just going to combine the two. So very quickly, that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see, I'm going to let you see here, we've got a little pink. Very nice. Right? So it's perfect. And we're not going to keep it in there very long either. So she Chef, if you would just do the honor yes. of flipping around and just start to start. So I'm going to have you just stir that up as I yep. slide more in. So Charlie, we're going to ask you, how do you want, like, we can almost leave it exactly as is, a uh -huh. little pink in there still, Yeah. or we can go little a little pink. bit more, but... Not yeah. a little, I always want a little, it's going to continue to cook, so anyway, yeah. Exactly. Perfect. All right. And voila, the last thing we'll do, and I actually, I'm sorry I did this, but I'll put your broiler back on, so we can just do a few of the tortillas. Okay. All right, so we're going to get the tortillas ready, and then we're going to put everything together, and then we're going to, yeah, we're going to sit down and eat, but we might have a margarita with us. All right, so Charlie, normally when I'm letting that steak go, uh -huh. I'll either make that margarita in between, but we're going to do it now and get ready to toast ourselves to a fantastic meal. So, four key ingredients, five, I guess. Uh, tequila, I kind of prefer pasote, discovered that during pandemic. Uh, Cointreau, simple syrup salt and limes that's really all you need it is simple in our shaker we've got some ice ready to go so we're going to do like uh probably six halves six or seven halves so really like three and a half limes and again get as much juice as you can out so i don't know if we should debut the name of this here or not but we did this towards the end of the summer with some friends uh -huh. and Again, their words, not mine. They said it was so good, we're calling it the Willis Rita. <laughs> I'll go one more, and we should be good. Okay. All right. Let's get to the good stuff. Well, in my younger days, I was a bartender, but we just used a mix. So, you're learning me something. <laughs> And Quattro and Triple Sec are basically the same, correct? They are. So if you have one or the other, they'll, they'll both work. And then, you know, you got to smile as you're shaking everything up. <laughs> and you did it high. Show the customers you really care. Yeah, I, I need another month of being locked down, I think, to make that happen. All right, I think what we'll do is we'll take a sip and then we'll save the rest for our steak fajitas. All right. So, Wendell. Cheers. That's it. Mm. Did I mention it's 10 o'clock in the morning here? <laughs> but it's always five somewhere, mm. my friend. That's true. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, so here we are with our steak fajitas. We have some tortillas that Wendell put into uh, the broiler for a couple minutes to get them nice and pliable. And we've got see, guacamole, sour cream, uh, cilantro, lettuce, and some Mexican tacos, Southwest, whatever you like cheese. So, 
Wendell, lead us off. All right, so really it's up to you however you want to do this, but you know, you just grab and put whatever you want in there. You know, some people like more peppers, some less, more meat, some less, but go ahead and fill your tortilla. And then also I should say, you know, if you like salsa, have that out and available, fresh avocado or whatever else you want. There's no right or wrong, but again, whatever makes you happy, there is no right or wrong. All right, so I got, I'm gonna put on a tad of sour cream. Gotta have block. Taste the cilantro. Easy. And okay. Now it's not ten o'clock in the morning. Now it's like you know, it's evening time. So, <laughs> mm. Mm. so cheers. Absolutely. So Wendell, here we go. <laughs> Thanks so much for um, making the trek out here today. I'll. Two and a half miles. <laughs> but it's, it's been great. And again, this is part of our series of, um, of spotlighting our community leaders and having a little fun cooking. You know, I, as it says on my apron here, I love to eat, therefore I cook. Um, and I, I really appreciate not only the work that you do in the community, and you are one of thousands of people here uh, trying to make our city a better place. So... Thank you so much, um, and thank you for the great meal. As I said before, I get a great meal, you get an apron. So, you know, <laughs> well, thanks I, for having me. This absolutely. is great, and I appreciate you spotlighting the work we all do because I think this is a little lighter tone to do it in. So absolutely. much appreciate it. So, so thank you all. Please, uh, if you could, like and subscribe here on our YouTube channel. Um, we always appreciate uh, comments on these videos. <laughs> thanks, Wendell. Appreciate it. And as always... Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me. And uh, we also do, within MPS, um, we do, uh, now this is where I would edit, um, uh, uh, fake weed, not fake interviews. We do mock interviews with the kids. For also your uh, vegetables. Uh, this is where we edit. Right. <laughs> Any support that you give us? Thanks again, Will. Dude, that goes in the blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Wendell. Appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.